Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. My name is Olakunle Kasumo, and it's great to be on the show again this week. I hope you enjoyed this one. Now, I'm reading an interesting book here, which I'll introduce very soon. But let, let, let me read from page 30 here. With a fatality risk of 0 0.13 for air travel, on average, a person would have to travel by air every day for 461 years before experiencing accident with at least one fatality. Did you, did you hear that? 461 years every day before experiencing accident with at least one fatality. On average, a person will have to travel every day for 20,932 years to experience a 100% fatal accident. Wow, just incredible statistics, incredible. Now, I'm reading this from a book titled Cotton Costs Without Cotton Corners, written by a man who has seen it all and done it all in the aviation sector. If there's anybody to listen to, as far as aviation in Nigeria is concerned, it's this gentleman. He joined us recently to discuss his very intriguing book. Let's get to meet with him and then enjoy the conversation. Dr. Gabriel Oloa is an aviation economist and an author. Oloa, who is an alumnus of the University of Lagos, has two doctorate degrees, one in business administration from Samuel Adeboyega University in Nigeria, and the other in technology from SK University, Kutonu, Republic of Benin. Dr. Oloa has about 50 years of experience in the aviation sector. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Management, a fellow Institute of Tourism Professionals, and a member of the American Chamber of Commerce, Brazil Chamber of Commerce, and Industry British Chamber of Commerce. He has served as chairman of the IATA Agency Investigation Panel for West Africa and a member of the ECOWAS Parliament Committee on Implementation of the Yamasukro Treaty. Olowo is currently the president of the Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative, he joins Channel's book club to discuss his book, Cutting Costs Without Cutting Corners, which highlights important dynamics of the local and global aviation industry. You're welcome, sir. Pleasure to be here. Great. And um, I mean, you've had so many years of experience in the aviation sector, and you finally decided to give us a gift by writing and publishing this book. Well done. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I understand that writing a book is a totally different ball game from every experience you've ever had. Definitely, yes. <laughs> it is a challenge. <laughs> but you see, it's, it's not good to pass the planet Earth without leaving something behind. That you've written. All the things you sweat in so many years of your endeavor I just carry it into the grave like that. Terrible. I mean, I mean, it's it's it's, it's suicide. It's it's, 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 it's a suicide. tragedy. Yeah. So I just thought of myself. I said, listen, age twenty one, you've entered this industry, and you're about seventy now. Don't carry this knowledge away. This experience, don't carry it away. Mm. Put it in a book. Mm. See how you can make it academic, make it practical experience, make it because I learned the rope. Mm. I grew through the ranks, I yet went through college. So, so that knowledge shouldn't just go into the grave like that. Okay, here we go. This is not exactly a memoir. This is, um, this is, this is more like a handbook on aviation. It uh, takes a reader through the various aspects of aviation, policies, yeah. um, training, accidents, accounting, financing. All sorts of Eng things. engineering, piloting. That was your. That was what motivated you to write this. What's the story behind this book? Precisely. You know, when you think about the word cost in every sphere of life, cost is the major issue. Even our polity, you want to cut cost, but are you cutting it rightly? Mm. When you don't cut rightly, you are cutting corners. Mm. 
if you give 10 yards of uh, material to your tailor, do me an agbada, and he wants to cut some for his children and grandchildren. <laughs> My agbada, at, at, at the end of the day, exist. your own agbada <laughs> will not be exactly what you want. <laughs> now, he's cutting corners, mm. all right? And if you don't give him enough, because you are cutting cost, he wants you to give him seven, and you give him six. You are cutting cost. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you, you get, are cutting you, corners. You, you get what you deserve. So in every sphere of life, mm -hmm. cost is a major issue. And there is, you make a deliberate attempt to cut costs. Mm. And while you are cutting that cost, you are cutting corners without knowing. Mm. And you don't get the result you need. So, so I just thought, listen, this is a topic that we don't pay attention to in every sphere of our life. And aviation is so, so intolerant to cutting corners. Any little error in aviation is life. Is this the summary of the aviation sector? The, the title of your book, Cutting Costs Without Cutting Corners, does it sum up the aviation sector in many ways? Up, in fact, every way. There is no element of aviation life that is not here. None. None. Because my exposure took me from the grass to the very peak of it. A to Z. You want to talk about financing an aircraft? You want to talk about maintenance of an aircraft? You want to talk about piloting? You want to talk about onboard catering? Onboard catering? Cutting costs there, you're going to give somebody poison. Mm. While cutting costs, or cutting costs, you are cutting corners in there. You're supposed to put certain preservative. You're cutting your costs. Oh, one drop is enough. When maybe they say put three. By the time he eats the food, he's having stomach upset. Because at certain altitude, that's the way you prepare food. Not like our restaurants on ground. Mm -hmm. So every sphere of life is contained in here. And, and that's why all those topics treats every element. Look at the travel agency. The travel agents, they call them ticketers. They are not ticketers. They are lawyers. Mm. They are executing a contract between the passenger and the airline. You are the passenger, the airline is the carrier. They are putting a contract together. So when they are putting that contract together, they must understand what they are doing. Because any clause in that contract that you don't understand or the airline does not understand is cutting corners. Mm. I must take the pain to tell you, hey, this flight allows you two pieces of baggage. Each baggage weighs so much kilo has this so much size, that is the term of the contract. Mm. But you just hey, 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 write me ticket. Lagos or no Lagos? <laughs> you write, you come out. When you lose your baggage, this is what happened to you. This is your claim. If they tear it, this is your claim. So this guy is a lawyer putting contracts together. <laughs> You know, <laughs> let, let, let me, let's run viewers through what you have here. Aviation <laughs> in Nigeria, chapter one, a bird's eye view. Um, and I like the short stories in your book. <laughs> the first Nigerian pilot. I like that. I like the history of aviation. Yeah. Um, the yeah. first plane that landed in Nigeria in, in Kano, Kano yeah. was 1925. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah. And it was such a risky flight because Honestly. there were no... Uh, it, 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 it was so like there was no evasion support it, system. It was like God was falling from heaven. What's what's happening here? And you explained how the aviation industry in Nigeria was birthed by the British. Yes, yes, hmm. yeah, yeah. And it was like a joke. It's it, it, uh, it's West African. Is it Air Force or something like that? It was like a joke. And then it then evolved. Evolved and evolved and evolved. And then you and had evolved. the Nigeria Airways. And, and your... the story of the Nigeria Airways yeah. here yeah. is heartbreaking. Pathetic. <sighs> How pa did pa we... Pa pathetic. <sighs> when, when we were little boys and you go into the aircraft, oh my God. Nigeria Airways aircraft. Nigeria Airways aircraft. And you see our men at the cockpit. And you see our crew. And you see the catering rolling out. I just hear the sound of the engine. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's a real shame. It's a shame. I mean, Nigeria of today, it's, um, 
Well, I don't want to use the word of Wale Shoyinka that we're a wasted generation. Mm. Yeah, who and what led us to that wastage is regrettable. It's painful. Maybe I'll come back to Nigeria Airways, but yeah, under this chapter, Evasion Bird's Eye View, you have airline airline crashes in Nigeria. And you have one table, one incredible table here. I mean, with all the plane crashes ever yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. Amazing. With the dates, yeah. the airline, yeah. the city, the yeah. dates. Yeah. Some of them brought tears to my eyes because yeah, yeah. I could remember yeah. very well some of those some of yeah. those crashes. In my own personal experience of one of the crashes, did you read that area? Yes. How, how I have to weep more than, mm. because every home that I visit, yeah. I tell them. Where well, you have to go and tell, bring you, them back. You, 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 you lost one, I lost 122. So I am more bereaved. It's, it's the, the experience you don't want to have. It's the experience you, 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 you pray not to happen when you have your um, accident committee, because you have accident committee in every airline. In the event this happened, what do we do? Oh, so much to talk, I mean, um, so much to talk about, that's sad. Flight standards, groups, directorates, etc. list of airports and their locations in Nigeria, challenges of Nigeria aviation industry. Then the second chapter, aviation risk management, where are we? Um, chapter three, Travel agent, travel management, chapter four, corporate governance, the missing link. I mean, <laughs> you, you covered everything <laughs> in a few pages. You. Thank, uh, you. Thank you. But you now wrote one of the times when my travel was smooth yes. while reading your book. Yeah. Was where you wrote about, um, where you wrote about how safe Flying is. Yes, in page 30, you said, yeah. with a fatality risk of 0 0.13 for air travel, on average, a person would have to travel by air every day yes. for 461 years. Yes, for the possibility before of Before experiencing for accidents. The, for the possibility of your dying. With at least one fatality. Yes. On average, a person would have to travel every day for 20,932 yeah. years yes. to experience a 100% fatality. Fatal yeah. accident. Yes, yeah, so it's that simple. So is that, this true? That, that is why when you go on board of a flight, no matter the poor environment of that operation, you know, Africa one time was blacklisted yes. as uh, flying coffins, dangerous zone. Aviation has so evolved that safety is taken for granted. Mm. That those machines. Two engines, two captains, two these, two that. So if one fails, it's like your eye. You lose one, one is one is carrying you. Your nose, two. Your hand, two. Your hair, two. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and you see when, when they now measure aviation accidents, it's now measured in million per million departures. Per million departure. Mm. And that statistics there shows you million. In Nigeria in 2017, data is there. We had less than a million departures in the whole, whole year. Less than a million? A, a whole year, in a whole year. So our aviation sector is not it? very big. No, because we, we, look, people, purchasing power is poor. And the cost of flying is not cheap. Technology is not cheap. Therefore, we are not maximizing the benefit of aviation yet. Not yet. We haven't gotten to the level where Nigeria Airways was. The Nigeria Airways was parading 50, 40, 30 aircrafts. And each aircraft must do you about 2,000, 2,500 hours to break even. Must do 2,000, 2,000 hours to break even. And you buy an aircraft and you are doing 600 hours on it. Mm -mm. I mean, I mean. Lagos, Abuja, one hour. Abuja, Lagos, one hour. Tell me, when do you want to do 2,000 hours? Just try. Try it. And see how many months. I, I, I wish... For one piece of aircraft to break even. And then you want to have 30 pieces of aircraft, 50 pieces of aircraft. Oh. So for you to have million departures, and when you have a million departure, you have 0.05 or is it 0.03? I don't know the current rate now of accidents rate of accident.
And that's how that came about. So when you okay. enter, you're a pilot. And let's say you fly every day, every day in 365 days. You may have to live through two, three, two thousand, three thousand 2,000, 3,000 years for the possibility of your dying in the airplane. So wow. those guys are very comfortable. So when you travel, just board and just sleep. I don't think so. When you go into <laughs> when you go into weather, when you go into weather, just feel like you're on uh, a Mukoko road. I just start praying. <laughs> <laughs> I just start confessing all my sins. <laughs> well, I, 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 mean, I, mean, I mean, look, in the last ten years now, there's no accident in Nigeria, none. Right. I read somewhere in your book yeah. that the demand for, I mean, air, air flights from airline companies, yeah. forgive me. Airline companies. Yes, yeah. It's so high that they can't <clears throat> meet with the demands. You know, there are so many markets with different uh, desire for the kind of machine they need. But most of the machines out there, most of them are designed for Europe and Western markets. The average traveler, in, in the US or UK, <clears throat> doesn't travel like the Nigerian or African man. Carries his briefcase and he's jumping into the aircraft. So you find some of those aircraft, no provision for baggage. An average, average African man, when he travels, he doesn't only shop, he's going to carry loads on the right, on the left. So you see machines that does not have plenty of space for cargo hold. Mm. For light traveler, some of them they call even they, they call them bus. You you hear the air bus. The air bus is for a quick traveler, briefcase only, is a, a bag and walk on. So they don't have capacity for baggage. They have small spaces for passenger, no space for baggage. In Africa, <clears throat> we don't have too many travelers, so you need a little space, mm. and you need plenty of space for baggage. So such aircraft is not available. Mm. So you, what you see airline operator in this market do is buy the airplane they see. The airplane with 120 seats, meanwhile your average market is 60, 70 passenger. Mm. If I carry 120 people to Abuja in the morning, how about in the afternoon, midday? So must I wait 6 p.m. in the morning and 6 a.m. in the evening, only two flights? when I should do hourly flights. Every hour, many people will do carry Lagos and Ugo. Mm. Lagos Kano. So you need an air airplane that would carry 30, 40, so that you can do hourly, if possible. And such aircraft now must carry plenty of baggage. Mm. The aircraft available is, we will not do that. Mm. You have your 737, 120 seats, and four tons of cargo. <laughs> so the aircraft type that most of the operators in our sector need is not available. You, t you buy what you see. Buy what you see. <laughs> and so you have, to, you have to manage the loss. Passenger space that is wasting and cargo space that is not enough. Mm. You know, hold on your mama. <laughs> well, let's, let's, um, uh, let, let me round up with, with this. I'll read something you've written here and then um, on a final note um, in page one, 126 you wrote in the last two years it appears to me that the plight of the Nigerian aviation employee especially cabin crew members rather than improving is getting worse yeah even indeed. those steps are being taken by the government through investments aimed at improving the state of infrastructure in the Nigerian air, in Nigerian airports we'll stop but our industry thrives primarily on viable airlines, and this is where the snag lies. One functional aircraft in the air can keep about 150 workers or more active. Absolutely. At present, Nigeria lacks strong, profitable, and competitive domestic airlines. Absolutely. So please hold, hold that, sir. Okay. Now, you wrote in 127. At present, foreign airlines are having a field day flying into Nigeria's various airports unchallenged as Nigeria lacks capacity to reciprocate its over 88 bilateral air service agreements signed with foreign countries. There should be a way to make it mandatory for all foreign airlines operating into Nigeria to have a certain number of Nigerian pilots and cabin crew 
on their fleet. <laughs> Aquilian task, eh? <laughs> okay. So I just extracted two of many issues you raised. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. first one is the issue of the Nigerian Aviation Employee. Mm -hmm. And you, you wrote here that um, it, the plight of the Nigerian Aviation Employee yeah. is getting worse rather than improving. Well, you don't have, <clears throat> if I were to be a Minister of Aviation, when I take my seat, I will say, how many airlines do I meet now? In four years, how many airlines do I want to see? If I want to retain those four airlines, let's say I meet four, what fleet do they have? Four, four aircraft? Do I want it to increase to X number of level by four years? I must have some performance indices for them to say they are growing. Yeah. If you grow, the employees will grow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Averagely, an aircraft will need 180 to 250 workers per one aircraft. Where there is good technology. 180 to 250 workers to service one aircraft with all the logistics, different Amazing. functions. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, averagely. But in Africa, you even have 300 workers per aircraft. Wow. So if aircraft fleet does not exit, does not increase, where do you want to put the increased workers? The workers. How do you want to increase workers? And now, the airline will tell you, how can I grow my aircraft fleet? Where do I operate to? Mm. The foreign airlines are coming to Port Harcourt. They're coming to Lagos. They're coming to Kano. They're coming to almost four destinations in Nigeria. Okay, from their home. What that is doing for your economy is that your domestic sector is being eroded. Mm. If you travel on British Airways to England today, people landing in England that are destined for England, they are less than 40%. They are connecting to Dusseldorf, Cologne, this, that. So is a, is, is, a, is a transit point. The same thing for Dubai, the same thing for Frankfurt. But Nigeria, where is your own hub? Everybody flies to the destination. Good politics, bad economics. Mm. And we say, I say to the minister again and again, good politics, I want to fly to Enugu directly from Paris. You have eroded Lagos Paris domestic flight. Mm. And so that guy cannot grow his fleet. And when he doesn't grow his fleet, he cannot grow his workers. Uh, I, I wanted to say something about that part about foreign airplanes, air, yes. airlines, just yeah. flying into our airspace. Into our, because on, on, now, unchallenged. now look at Emirates, he's flying into this country one time. They were flying how many? 13 frequencies. And ARP said, I wanted to fly, uh, is it five or so? And there was agitation. Yeah, if you fly 20 into my country. I fly 20 to your I country. I be able to fly 20 into But your do country. I have capacity to fly 20? No. So if I have no capacity to fly 20, I'll tell you not to fly 20. Because you are growing the market for yourself. Unless you put my people there. And put my people there. Let's share it. Sell part of your aircraft. Let me sell into a part of your aircraft. Free of charge. Because that's my royalty. It's my godfather, right? Yeah. If you fly 10, I fly 10. Fair. To fly, fly, I fly, but for you to fly more than me, you are utilizing my godfather rights. And you must pay for it. You have to pay for it. Yes. Dr. Lowo, thank you very much for <laughs> <laughs> this conversation that I don't want to end. <laughs> but I, I think viewers should get this book and um, all the things you are saying and more are written in here. Well done, sir. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us on Channel's Book Club. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks only for the time. And thanks for taking the time to have read it, <laughs> not resigning that you're not an aviator. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye-bye.